Hello, it's Mike with Meltpack. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today is day number seven for the 112620-1641 engine build. Uh, today I'm going to be installing the uh, push rods, rocker arms, and do a compression test and uh, make sure everything's uh, nice and working properly. And um, I like to do this before I start putting together an engine because just in case something happens, um, I, I know that uh, it's it's the problems right now instead of later on when you start up the engine and things go awry. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching today and don't forget to like and comment below and then also subscribe to my channel and then uh, I know you don't want to hear about me but uh, let's let's get to uh, the engine. Here's our engine. I love these uh, carts. They're very versatile easy on the back too. Here's a push rod tubes or I'm sorry push rods uh, so I gotta push put the push rods in the push rod tubes and then put the connecting or sorry yeah the um, rocker arms in. So what I normally do is I take a uh, piece of metal of some sort and uh, push through each end of the push rod just to make sure that it's nice and clear and it's not obstructed because um, there needs to be oil that passes through that push rod as the engine goes. So I do it to all eight of them and then when I put the push rod in I put a a goob, a glob, or whatever you want to call it, of uh, engine, engine assembly lube on the one end and push it into the, the lifter. And then on the actual rocker arms, I put uh, the dab or whatever, the glob, on the part that's going to come in contact with the push rod. And then oftentimes I line up the push rods into the, the rocker arms um, and you can kind of push the rocker arm in so the push rod tube won't fall down and then sometimes you're not able to put the um, washer on right now um, so I sometimes have to tighten up one of the nuts to get it tightened in the, the rocker arms up to the head so I, I could actually put the um, rocker arm nuts and tighten them up um, I like to use lock washers on the this um, these two 13 millimeter nuts. Um, I've had it in the past where they those nuts come off and it's not a good thing for your engine. So what I what I like to do before I do my compression test is go on to top dead center on each of the pistons and um, loosen up the the valves a little bit just to make sure there's enough uh, movement in the rocker arms because um, in the past I've done it where I didn't do this and the rocker arms wouldn't. Um, release the valve or, or close the valve all the way and so it had a false negative as I did my compression test and there was no air in the the, the chamber or the, the, the cylinder. I had to replace one of the uh, screws for the adjusting screws for the rocker arm. It was just too far gone. There's number two. Making sure everything's all squared away here. And I, I, I haven't, 
I don't really tighten them up too much. Um, I like to do it when I start up the engine. And then once once after once initial start has done, I know exactly where top dead center is done is uh, located, and so I'm able to go through and properly um, adjust everything, timing and everything, and uh, adjust the valves. Oftentimes I don't put the valve covers on. I don't know why I did this time, but um, normally I keep them off when I do the compression test. So so I'm hooking up my starter here, and then you'll see here it run right here pretty soon. So here's the um, compression tester. This is what the gauge that sh shows the pressure that's inside the each cylinder. So I, I screw the the uh, the bolt end onto the into the um, spark plug hole, and I'm using a five eighths um, wrench here, uh, box box and wrench, and then I have a. Uh, kind of an o-ring on the ends to kind of help seal it when it gets in there. So once it's nice and tight, I connect the um, the gauge on the, the one side and then once that's connected then I start turn over the engine. And I like to uh, have just a pad of paper, just I jot down what the engine number is. And then I just go one, two, three, four for each of the cylinders. And here's the, here's the first test here. I'm gonna let you hear as I, I do it here. So after each cylinder, I write down the pressure PSI that I see in this pressure gauge. And so I, th I think this engine was uh, right around 100, maybe 9500. I think the most time consuming part of this is um, putting the end into the spark plug hole and tightening it up. Uh, it takes a little bit. So I'm going to um, be showing you a couple other um, cylinders and, uh, and, and having you, s s you know, hear what it sounds like when, when I'm turning it over. And it's interesting how um, the air increases as the piston goes up and down in the chamber. So after this number two is all tightened up, then I will um, put the gauge back on the end and then turn it over and hopefully you can see it as I do it and then we'll, we'll turn it over here and you can see exactly what's happening and hear what's happening as well.
So that's that's what I do for all all four cylinders is um, same process. Checking the compression, you want to make sure that it's about I believe you know five five percent from each other um, when you when you um, calculated everything. Um, you don't want it to be too far off. And um, I know if there is one cylinder that doesn't have anything, sometimes you know check the valves first before ripping everything apart. Um, there was about one time that um, I did have a bad head. Okay, so there's uh, there's day seven. I hope um, your build's going well, and I hope these videos are helping you out. Uh, thanks so much for watching today, and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all those people that are in the Volkswagen community or um, like to work on cars. And uh, have a great day.